Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen. I've just received my Polar Engineering 62mm throttle bodies. So what I thought I'd do is uh, set everything out here on the bench, give you a good look at them, give you my opinion on them, and uh, give you a bit of an instructional on how to properly mount them to your intake manifold because it's not something that you need to just go at like a bull at a gate. You need care, and these need to be mounted with precision. You are working with fairly tight tolerances. So let's get all these guys out. I've got the, uh, the old throttle bodies here with the linkages that I rebuilt on them with new bushes. They will have to be transferred over onto the new uh, Polar Engineering jobbies. That's not the box that they came in, by the way. Um, that's just what I've had them sitting here in the, sh in the shed because I have had them out and had a bit of a look at them and just thought I'd rewrap them and stick them in a box. I've actually had them for a couple of days while I've been doing some other things. So this was just to keep them sort of safe. So let's start by just getting everything out and having a bit of a look at it. Okay guys, so there they are, we've got our throttle bodies, bits and pieces, electrical connector because I did order a throttle body with the uh, the Heller TPS on it, some bolts, your two O-rings, some instructions, that one's basically for the Heller TPS sensor. And this just basically goes over your uh, your installation of your throttle bodies and uh, you know about transferring your return mechanism over and uh, all that sort of stuff so if you um, if you do have a set of these I would suggest that you read these installation instructions in depth and uh, get yourself kind of ready for it but at this stage um, there's nothing I particularly need to know on those so let's uh, let's just have a look at everything. All right, so this is my non TPS throttle body. You can see the airing groove that's machined in at the bottom. Obviously, there these have been uh, anodized black. Uh, very 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 nice machining on them. The throttle shafts look absolutely amazing. Butterflies. Very, very nice indeed. Very, very nice indeed. Very smooth in operation. Very, very nice. Little tiny mark on the bottom here. Um, I don't know what that was from, but I also noted on this throttle body when I unwrapped them. Oh, maybe it's this one. One of them had a bit of a mark in the top. Oh, it's this one. All right, this throttle body also has a little bit of a bit of a mark in the top there. I don't know what's happened there. There's a bit of a burr on it. Could be from shipping. Something may have banged into it. Maybe the bolts, uh, you know, banged into it in the box. Uh, I don't really know, but it's nothing that's really sort of problematic in any way. But uh, just something that I have noted. I don't think that's happened here in the shed. As I say, all I've done is got them out of the box. That they came in, had a look at them, wrapped them back up in bubble wrap and put them back in the box. Anyway, it's insignificant, so it doesn't really matter. As I mentioned on this one, the TPS is already fitted. This, the uh, throttle stop plates and the throttle stops are already fitted onto these things. These are actually new and uh, all adjusted up properly. And I reckon that's some, um, some damn fine work on behalf of Polar Engineering because... If you've uh, pulled any of these, uh, the old original throttle bodies apart, you know what it's like trying to deal with uh, this throttle stop plate, how it's just a punched uh, piece from the factory that's quite a bad fit. And uh, once you take them on and off a few times, they get a little bit sloppy. Uh, they're just not a real great thing. This is just a very, very uh, superior solution. And I don't think that it's something that's available on other throttle bodies or comes standard with them. I think you have to completely reuse all of your um, your old mechanism in total, including that guy, which is uh, is this guy here. All right, so you can see 
uh, what the go there is with them for a bit of a comparison but as I say these things are hey, they're a bit on the average side you know they are a bit on the average side so that's bloody fantastic so if you haven't rebuilt your um, linkage mechanisms at this stage it's probably something you should address these um, these bushes and everything are yeah well mine were in very very poor condition which prompted me to uh, make up my own set out of Delrin and uh, and just kind of paint the mechanisms they haven't been painted in anything particularly fantastic just some um, some single pack uh, satin epoxy and uh, they've been sitting here in the shed so I can't really say how how fantastic they'll hold up but it is a paint that I use uh, quite often on things and and don't really have any issues with but uh, yeah definitely have a look at your bushes guys have a look at your bushes no point putting old flogged out bushes on your nice fancy new uh, throttle bodies yep same on this one they just they're just great that's really what you need on your new throttle bodies size difference you can see the obvious uh you know difference in the the opening on these the uh the polar engineering throttle bodies uh internally dwarf your yeah, factory throttle bodies probably see it better here anyway big difference big difference guys which while i'm at it while i've got them in this position let me just say this is one of the biggest installation issues that you may come across and that is that the polar engineering uh, throttle bodies use an o-ring instead of the factory gasket now that is a superior method of sealing the throttle bodies it, it really really is but because of the increase in size in the throttle bodies it puts the o-ring very close to your bolt holes here and uh, you don't have a lot of room to um, to play with and due to the closeness of the bolt holes so you have a very small gap between the inside of the throttle body which will be the inside of the manifold and the sealing surface of the o-ring so any mistakes that you make here when you modify your intake manifold could potentially lead to your new throttle bodies not sealing properly on the o-ring so um, it's something that you need to take extreme care with when you are matching your intake manifold to these throttle bodies which we will be doing shortly so yeah it's just something i can't press enough how important this is to um you know be very very careful when you are uh, cutting the new hole in your manifolds speaking of which let's get the intake manifold up onto the bench and have a look at it all together those regular viewers of the channel will probably remember the work that i did on this intake manifold it is the standard um, TT manifold, but it has uh, had a lot of welding done on it. All of the ears and um, indentations and brackets and stuff have been cut off and welded up. And I've also cut off the IACV mount on the back, and it's just generally had a lot of sort of customization done to it by me. But as far as this aspect of it goes, how the throttle bodies mount on the front and this whole setup is completely as it is on every other manifold so um, nothing that's been done to this manifold is any different to what you guys will have on your standard manifold so what i think i'll do i might flip this up mount it in a vise and let's sit these guys on and uh, have a bit of a look and um, see where we're at with everything seems like a pretty good spot let's sit these guys on and have a bit of a suss out So that slipped on nicely over the top of the dowels there guys but the first thing i have noticed is that there is a slight rock in the throttle body and um, i pretty much guarantee it is not the throttle body itself it'll be the mounting face on the inlet manifold not being completely flat you know she's a an old inlet manifold 
and it's not unrealistic to um, assume that that mounting surface is not particularly flat. Now, if you're using a you know a standard throttle body or one that just uses a, a gasket, there's probably more than enough thickness to take up any really minor um, mismatching of the two faces. But being that this uses a very small A-ring, I think it is imperative to make sure that the surfaces mate together perfectly in order to get, you know, a, a really, really good seal. So it's only very small, but, but there is a little bit of a wobble there. All right, let's have a look at this one. Oh yeah, same thing there, guys. I don't know if you can hear. Right, but that's rock. Now, there are no obvious burrs on this face. And uh, there's no obvious burrs on the other face as well. I had previously checked them. The machining's so good on these, uh, on these polar engineering throttle bodies. I just refuse to believe that that's where there could be an issue considering we've got a brand new CNC machine piece and a very old cast piece that was machined bloody 30 plus years ago. One of them's not perfectly flat. So that leads us to the problem. What are we going to do about it? Fortunately I do have options here in the shed. I could just mount this intake manifold in the mill and just skim cut these two mating surfaces but well it's a bit of a pain in the ass to mount this uh, on the table in the mill and plus that's not a solution that most of you guys would be able to do as well so uh, what I will do is I will try to come up with a solution that all you guys can use um, to correct your manifold mating surfaces but first of course we need to know what exactly is the problem and where that is so what I'll do guys I'll, I'll go and grab my surface plate out I've got a small surface plate I'll sit it on the bench here and we'll just quickly um, test both of the throttle bodies on it, which I uh, really don't think we're going to find anything. And uh, I may even be able to use the surface plate, because it is not massive, to test these surfaces on here. I'll just have to take the dowel pins out, which is no big deal. These guys come out fairly easy. You just squeeze them together with a pair of pliers and they will come out. And uh, we'll just start checking everything for flatness. All right, I'm back. It took me a friggin' hour to find this roller. God, I lose so much stuff in the shed. All right, we're just gonna prep the surface plate. A little bit of bearing blue. You only need a real little bit, guys. That's probably too much. <laughs> Get that rolled out. This is actually gonna be pretty hard just because the, um, the throttle body's being black, it's gonna be quite hard to pick anything up, but uh, we should still see something. I might just stone over that little nick that we've got there just to uh, make sure that's not giving me any grief. I don't think it is, but. Ah, uh, that's fine. Always try to keep it really even pressure on these guys. You'll notice that this isn't isn't rocking at all. This has absolutely zero rock on the surface plate, which tells us straight away that there's there's no problem with this, you know. Nah, that's that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Literally nothing, as I say. With it sitting on the surface plate. There's no rocking at all, like, and the surface plate's dead flat. So straight away that tells us there's there's no issue with these throttle bodies, which, you know, is pretty bloody obvious anyway. But always pays to check everything, guys. I'm not going to check the second one because they both rocked exactly the same on the inlet manifold. And 
I did notice with this second one that this little adapter plate on the side here for the TPSs and stuff. On this one, it's ever so slightly high. So it would mean I've got to strip all that off. And, and as I say, they both rocked exactly the same, um, you know, on the on the inlet manifold. So there's, there's literally no point. So these get a thumbs up from the Aussie Shed. All right, you saw me pull the dowel pins out on these. So they're uh, completely flat now. So we can uh, run them on the surface plate. So just that initial push around guys and you can see that we're only touching on the outside there and uh, on the outside here so uh, at this stage we can't tell anything because it's actually quite bad. I'm just going to quickly run a stone over this face, clean it up, run a stone over it just so uh, there's no chance of it um, marking up my surface plate there because it seems like it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit chunky. All right, I'll be back in a second and we'll give it another check. All right, so just after stoning both of these, I can tell you right now, neither of them are flat just from the stoning marks that, that that's left on there. Not that, uh, uh, you know, using a small stone like that will give you any, um, you know, precise indication, but it will certainly give you a general indication and from that general indication, there are highs and there are lows. Now that poses quite the problem. That was very awkward to lift that onto the surface plate. And uh, I don't have anything smaller to, uh, to test this with. So what I might do, actually, I've got a new plan. <laughs> what I might do, I might machine a piece of steel or aluminium on the mill check it on the surface plate and then use it as a reference to check these because it's just going to be too hard to manhandle either this or the surface plate uh, on top of each other so give me a minute guys i'll machine up a plate that i can use to um, check the flatness of these instead of trying to do it with uh, a couple of big things all right i'll be back Alrighty, that's looking pretty good. Just give him a little bit of a rub over with a stone. Just to get rid of any burrs from the milling process. Which you're going to want to try and scratch up the surface plate. We'll see what sort of a job that did. So you can see from that guys, we've got a lot of contact. You know, it's, it's pretty reasonable for something that's just, just come straight off the mill. Um, it's certainly good enough that we can use for something like this, considering we're gonna be, you know, I can rotate it around a bit, but uh, it, you know, is certainly, you know, a thousand times flatter than the top of these inlet manifolds. It's gonna work out real good. Aha! Right. So wherever we're touching all these dark blue bits, they're high spots and these are obviously all low spots so you can see that is very very not flat. I think we'll just quickly do the other side and get a bit of a look at that one. Aha, uh -huh. yes, as we thought. So you can see we've just got these two high spots right around there, right around here, and we've got no contact through any of this. So as you would imagine, guys, I'll even turn the block around in the other direction. And I reckon we'll still get the same thing. 
Yep. It doesn't lie, guys. It doesn't lie. Now we've got to work out how to fix it. So what I'm going to do to this one, guys, is I'm going to give it a bit of a scrape with a scraper. And uh, I'm going to scrape some of these highs off and um, see how it goes. I haven't actually scraped aluminium before. I've only scraped cast iron and mild steel. It might be a little bit too aggressive, but I'll, I'll give it a crack and we'll see how it goes. So you can see what we're doing here, guys. We're just scraping off those highs, uh, and we'll recheck it, scrape it again, and see how we go. Like I said, I'm being fairly gentle with this, because the aluminium is reasonably soft. Plus, it's hard for me to get a good angle on it as well up there. Just quickly guys, you can see what I'm trying to do here. At no point have we had any contact with the bearing blue up in this area across here. We've had various spotted contact all around here, which means it's getting pretty close. But we have to keep taking these highs down until we end up with contact up here, because at this stage we don't know just how low that is there uh, until we start getting some contact. I think we're getting pretty close, but um, what I'm trying to do now is uh, try and leave a little bit on here and just kind of take it down that way just to so that we remove the least amount of material possible like we're only talking very tiny amounts anyway we're really just trying to get to a point where we know we've got something fairly even that we can seal onto and at this stage we just don't have it yet So you can see the result here now guys, we've pretty much got contact all the way around. Um, as you would have seen, we were working up into this area up here where there was no contact, so there was obviously a real low spot. This is looking pretty good, that's actually a pretty decent pattern on there now. That's as far as I'll take it, uh, scraping it. And I didn't really show you my scraper, just Google it if you want to learn out how to make a scraper. This is just an old file that's been, uh, that I've ground here in the shed on the grinder and just turn it into a bit of a scraper and uh, just watch a bit of stuff on scraping if you want to learn how to do this sort of thing really not that hard to do so what I'll do now I'll do the opposite side I'll do that off camera and then once I've got the opposite side to this to the stage of this I'll then clean these up and I'll use a bit of um, adhesive backed sandpaper on this I'll probably use maybe 400 and I'll just go over that really nice and evenly just to uh, get rid of any imperfections from scraping it and we'll have a nice even flat surface that we can then begin to fit to the throttle bodies because you know obviously we haven't even begun to fit the throttle bodies to this inlet manifold so 
bit of work in this one over here as you can see it's um you know pretty nasty compared to the one that we've just done although uh, this i think was the better of the two but you can see we've got real solid contact here no contact again up through there it's a bit patchy through here but we'll see that might that might come down pretty quickly it might come down pretty quickly anyway i'll get this one down and then um i'll give you a squeeze once we get to cleaning it up a bit so that's our second one now guys that's looking pretty good they're both at the same stage so what i'm about to do i'm going to fix some adhesive sandpaper to this uh, nice flat uh, piece of mild steel that we did and then i'm just going to use that to just clean these up even further so first we'll just get rid of all of this we'll give them a bit of a rub we'll check them again and we should be um pretty good to go i reckon or pretty good to start actually fitting the throttle bodies to them bloody hell nothing's easy is it guys nothing's bloody easy so that's some 120 i think i'll start with 120 make a bit of a rough cut and see what we end up with just be very very careful and very gentle when you're doing this guys keep the block nice and flat don't rock it at all you, you really don't want to upset all that work that you've just done to get this nice and flat just you know just be real gentle with it you can see we're already getting a pretty nice consistent finish there and uh, a consistent scratch which tells us that we are nice and flat Alright, we will keep going for a bit on this. Alrighty, that is looking real nice, guys. Real nice. Alrighty. Let's give this one the same treatment. Remember... Don't rock it, keep it nice and flat, and just go nice and easy, and just stay nice and flat with it. Oh yeah. You can tell by the paper marks that it really is nice and flat now. It's looking real nice guys, real nice. I am pretty happy with how that's come up. Now, we'll just go down one pipe, we'll give them another hit, and then they should be good to go. This is 220, found some 220 there in the drawer. Um, this is a better a better grid, I think. I think 400 um, is probably too fine. 220, should be just nice, I think. You can actually feel how flat it is and how evenly it's gripping the sandpaper now. It's, um, you know. I must say, guys, like if you... Obviously, not everyone's got the ability to um, mill a piece of steel down like this and, um, you know, have a surface plate and all that sort of stuff. If you've got a, a piece of glass, like a thick piece of glass or just something just something that's flat that you can use for all this process like anything's got to be better than the finish that was on here originally as, as you saw it was just atrocious there were big gaps in it like this was really low up through here i honestly don't think that would have sealed properly uh with the o-ring because the o-ring is only quite quite thin it, it, it needs to be a thin o-ring because of the um you know um, the area that we're covering here being so close to the edge it, it's got to be a very tiny o-ring very thin o-ring so obviously it's only going to compress so far um, so everything needs to be in my opinion everything needs to be pretty good you know? and this could very well be one of those times where people you know will buy these uh, buy these throttle bodies fit into their car and have leaks and blame the throttle bodies because it didn't leak before with the factory throttle bodies uh, because of the gasket setup but 
with something like this that's more of a, a precision fit um, then you know yeah you, you're gonna have issues and it's you know it's not the throttle bodies it's the freaking manifold that's pretty good guys I'm very happy with that let's go right down and have a really good look at this you can see there guys that is really nice really nice and flat all right give this one a touch and we'll be good to go that'll do me that will do me guys final check with the bearing blue Should be somewhere near it, I think. Looks pretty bloody good to me. Pretty bloody good. All right, guys, I'm faced with a little bit of a dilemma. I've just edited all the footage up until this point, and it's well over half an hour. Now, I'm, I'm tossing up whether to cut this video off here and make it into two parts or just keep plowing through. Problem is, YouTube doesn't really like long-form videos. It doesn't really recommend them or anything like that. So, it's um, probably going to suck for me if I do that. But, if I don't do that, it's going to suck for you guys because you won't be able to see the whole lot in one piece. So what I've decided to do is bugger YouTube, I'm just going to do it. So if at any point you'd like to pause and, and watch the rest of it another time, because there's probably another 20 minutes at least to this video. Um, I, and I went back over the footage and I tried to speed up and compress and cut out as much stuff as possible. But I don't think I could really cut anything more out just because it would be, it would leave missing holes in the information and missing bits of what we're actually doing so anyway bugger it i'm just going to keep pushing forwards so what i'm about to do now is um sit the new polar engineering throttle bodies on the manifold open the throttle plates up and give you a bit of a squiz at how much material needs to be removed from the manifold locations where the throttle bodies mount I'll just open these throttle plates up just be gentle when you're doing this guys because you are going to hit the uh, the manifold on the inside so looking down in here you can see the amount that has to be removed from the manifold and it's not a small amount there is quite a bit And we have to do it very, very carefully. That's what you don't lose these dowel pins, guys. Since I took them out, they just want to come in and out every time I take the throttle bodies on and off. Looks like they had a bit of Loctite on them holding them in. But once I disturbed them, they, um, they just want to come out. And you could easily lose them. When I um, got this car... Uh, there was actually already one missing, so one of these is actually new. You can still buy them from Nissan, so that's a that's a positive thing. All right, so uh, what are we going to do? How are we going to get all this sort of marked out? So standard practice, guys. I'm just going to use a thick black Sharpie, and I'm going to mark all this area around here on the manifold. The reason we're doing this is because if we mark on the bare aluminium, because we're going to use a very sharp scriber, we won't be able to see it very well. And we want to see this line really, really well. Just let that dry off. And we'll plop the throttle bodies back on. Now grab yourself a thin, long, very sharp scriber. Now these particular sorts of scribers are very common. 
these ends actually unscrew out of the main body. And what I do with these is I unscrew them, put it in the cordless drill, run it on the belt sander, and tune up the point so it's very long and thin because the longer and thinner and sharper the point is, the easier it'll be for you to get an accurate scribe mark, particularly inside of something. So as I say, a fat thing, pencil, nothing like that, no good, not accurate enough. It's gotta be a very long, sharp scriber. Now I don't know how much of this you guys will be able to see, just because we're fighting many objects. All right, let's see if I can hold that there. But basically, you get the idea. Be very, very careful of the throttle body as well. So, so do that. Work your way around. I'm going to have to get rid of the camera and everything because I need to be very, very careful myself doing this and marking around the throttle plate is um, very tricky. You don't want to mark the throttle plate in any way. So you need all your hands and all your eyes working at once. And unfortunately I can't do that um, with a camera sitting here. So I'll get them marked up and uh, we'll come back. All right guys, throttle bodies are all marked up now. Um, I'm just about to remove them and have a look at how much material we have to remove. But I have uh, in the process of doing that noticed one thing and it's only Particular to this throttle body here. Now I mentioned this earlier that one of these uh, plates that mount on the side, one of these guys here, which um, are used to mount the throttle stops and all that sort of stuff, that particular one on that throttle body is is hanging slightly lower than the bottom of the throttle body. Now it's not much, and I'll measure it shortly and. Um, just to sort of prove it to you guys. It's actually touching the top of the manifold here and stopping the throttle body seating down perfectly flat. It's a very, very tiny amount and you can see it by shining a torch through and I was trying to um, set the camera up so that I could actually show you guys the light coming through there. But mate, I couldn't get it. I just couldn't get the angle and, and stuff dicking around with it. So um, what I'll do I'll measure that properly so I can uh, show you how much it is. Isn't much, but it's enough that it probably wouldn't affect the O-ring ceiling, but it's still something that you, you don't want there. And what I'll probably do, I'll probably just take a little piece out of the manifold here rather than touch the throttle body. Um, that would be the easiest thing to do. And it's only just in on the edge. Maybe all, all manifolds um, may not be the same in this area. So you might find that some of the manifolds actually clear, but for this particular manifold, it does actually touch there. Again, guys, this just highlights the fact that you've got to have your eyes open and you've really got to be looking at anything and everything that you can um, in order to do mechanical stuff on cars properly. Like a tiny little thing like that that you miss, it could really make a difference with your final outcome, you know. All right, guys, so while I was at it, I just quickly marked this line here which is the uh, the outside edge of the throttle body on the manifold here and you can see that the casting is uneven in this area it's an uneven amount we're kind of zero here and we're about about two millimeters up that end so what i'm going to do is just while i'm using the air die grinder to remove this stuff i'll just take that uh, area away so then you know the issue will be sort of solved as I sort of say with the throttle bodies, that's the only side plate that is hanging down, although it is a very minuscule amount, 0.1 of a millimetre. In no other place is the casting actually hanging over the throttle body either, so even if you know any of the others were hanging over, it wouldn't matter because they just kind of um, slide down beside it. But as you can see, that's the only, only one that's like that. The others are all um, sitting up you know, sort of here, and uh, they're tucked in a lot nicer. Anyway, just bad luck, I guess. So I'll go and uh, get the air die grinder set up with a rotary burr in it, and uh, we'll start chopping out the middle of these holes. Just a couple of tips before I get stuck into this, guys. That's the rotary burr I'm using. 
one with a round end if you don't own rotary burrs or a die grinder very good tool to have for doing automotive stuff I've got many different burrs with different shapes on them. You do need them depending on what you're doing, but uh, ones with a square top makes it a lot harder to get a smooth finish when you, you know, you're going around stuff. So preference majority of the time, that's the sort of style I use. When I'm doing aluminium and sometimes when I'm doing steel, I always keep a block of wax with me and uh, keep reapplying wax to the to the burr because the aluminium will clog up in the teeth of the burr and uh, you'll get to a point where it won't cut anymore and then you'll have to go around with a scriber and try and dig out all the bits of aluminium which is no fun and takes bloody ages to do you can see there's remnants of wax on the bottom there from the last time i would have used this i actually cleaned that out with a wire brush just to um, have a look at the state of the teeth before i started because they do get chunked up depending on what you're doing with them um, and I, I've got a couple of them there, and this was the best one. <laughs> it's it's all right. It's not super great, but it is the best one. There's one there that I think I'll have to throw out. But, um, yeah, and generally, I'll always, I'll always use a mask when I'm doing this sort of stuff, just because you do get a lot of crap going in the air that you don't want to be breathing in. Uh, also, cutting this out, you want to sneak up onto this line. You don't want to be going hard with the die grinder. And trying to get right up to that line you want to slowly work your way to it like work your way around you know maybe maybe try and take that half that amount off and then try and sneak in a little bit further and a little bit further i don't usually go any closer than a mil or half a mil uh, with the rotary burr i'll then move to a um, like a paper scroll for head porting which you'll see because I'll, I'll i'll do that um, just because it's a lot less aggressive and um, if I do lose focus for a moment, I'm not going to grind past that line. And then I'll, I'll again, I'll only take that just just shy of the line, and then I'll probably finish with a flat wheel, just because again, the flat wheel is even less aggressive than the paper head porting scroll, and they're they're larger, so you get more of an even consistent cut. You know, I'm like larger in in, in that way. Um, so I'll probably use one of the largest uh, flat wheels that I have just because there's a lot less chance of putting impressions in the side and going inside the line when you're working with something that's almost the same size as what you're, what you're going in and out of, you know. And lastly, just be really, really careful, guys. Be really careful. You can, if you want, put masking tape on this, you know, to sort of protect it. You could have even taped it first and then marked it um, but it's a lot harder to mark when you've got tape on there. It's a lot less accurate. And realistically, if you do have tape over the top of this and you slip and hit it with a burr, you're going to go straight through the tape anyway. It's really not going to give you a lot of protection. Um, it may help with something like a flat wheel, but um, something like this, it's, it's not going to... You just have to be really, really careful. Hold your hands in such a way that you're not going to be it's not going to be able to jump out like keep a good grip on it you know and really try to make sure that if worse comes to worse you're not going to skip across the face you know you're not just going to go ah, across like that because you'll just you'll just destroy it you know you'll just destroy it all your work will be ruined your manifold will probably be ruined unless you can get someone to weld it up for you and uh it's just uh, you're in for a world of pain so Control is the main thing. Keep good control. Keep the burr nice and deep in the cut so there's very little chance of it coming out and skipping across. Don't sort of work with the tip. Keep it well down and uh, take it slow and be careful. And good luck, gentlemen. May the force be with you. So that's just about all of the uh, the burr work done, guys. You can see we're pretty close to being up to the line. I've got probably half a mil to a mil, sort of all the way around on them both. 
and uh, that's obviously as I mentioned earlier that's left there for cleanup work you obviously don't want to go right up to the edge first go and depending on how how steady your hands are with this sort of thing as well you um you know you don't want to get too close to that edge with your initial cut uh, it is very imperative too guys to mount this somewhere firmly when you're working on it and just like driving a car you need to have both hands firmly on your die grinder not be trying to hold this between your knees while you're sitting on the ground or having one of your mates hold it while you uh, attack it with the die grinder with one hand and you know all that sort of thing that is just a major recipe for disaster so mount the thing firmly clamp it in something somehow something that it's, it's a comfortable height that you are in a comfortable position with the tool while you're using it all these things together add up to you know a successful process i've also been doing a bit of rough blending with the rotary burr while i've been in there uh, there was a lot of casting marks and stuff that i've uh, been you know blending down into and and things like that uh, there's a bit of an edge there that I've sort of rolled onto. I'll show you here. I've done less work um, sort of blending this one. It's hard to get a torch in there as well as the camera. But I'll blend that edge there. I'll blend that. Alright, now I need three hands. Hang on. So I'll be blending this edge here down into this a bit better as well. There's a, quite a lip there at the moment. Uh, I actually left that there just so I could sort of show you guys. Um, they're obviously different configurations because this one's almost right on the runner. That one steps down, it, it protrudes right up. Things like this edge under here, I will roll that under as well. At, at the moment, that's currently like a really sharp edge. So I will uh, like just sort of blend that under. Because, you know, air doesn't like wrapping around sharp corners. It'll just kind of break off. So the smoother transition you can make for anything that may even seem quite ridiculous and minuscule, it all helps, guys. So a little bit of blending is all I'm saying. I need to go freaking too crazy with it. But just, yeah, any of these sort of hard edges, just knock the corners off them and round them up a bit, you know. It all helps. And uh, as I say, so now I'm about to change over to a cartridge roll and, um, you know, smooth the burr marks out a bit and maybe do a little bit more blending with a cartridge roll. And then I say final smoothing and everything and, and coming up to that edge will be done with a flap wheel, I would assume. Look, on, honestly, guys, if you're a bit scared, you could leave that where it is half a mil off that edge if you don't want to get any closer i don't really think there would be any issues with doing it like that it doesn't look as neat when you uh, open the, the throttle plates up but you know you don't do that do you you've got silicon couplers on there and hoses you're not going to be sticking your head down in there looking at that but uh you know it's all just part of the process unrestricted airflow yada 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 but if you're a bit scared and you're most of the way there and you've got it pretty close and you're worried about fucking it up, just leave it where it is, guys. Smooth her off a bit and leave it where it is. No one will know and it won't matter a rat. All right, but because I'm an idiot, I'm going to keep going. And uh, I, I have a lot of experience doing this sort of stuff too, guys. Don't think I'm coming at this um, as a first-time person doing this sort of stuff. I have done a shit ton of porting and blending and stuff like that in car on cars with heads and manifolds and exhaust manifolds and things over the years so um i'm probably talking like it's all a bit easy which can be a bit of a problem sometimes but uh, i am coming from a place of experience and i do apologize for that if sometimes i make things sound a lot easier than they are if you're a bit of a novice anyhow cartridge roll time I'll do a little bit of filming just like I did before and then I'll show you what it looks like at the end before the next stage with the flat wheel. Alrighty. So this is a cartridge roll, guys. It's just uh, sandpaper, like aluminium oxide or one of those kind of things on a rod here. And these are used for um, head porting and manifold porting and all sorts of porting. 
uh, sort of the next stage after you finish using your burrs and things. Now you can buy these as refills, you can buy all the components individually or you can buy a kit. Um, I'll just show you the kit that I've got here. Now, I bought this probably 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago, Standard Abrasives Motorsport Division. It's a head porting kit, there you go, deluxe porting kit, blah 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 blah, and over the years I have just kept filling it up, you buy cartridge rolls in all different shapes and skinny ones and um, I keep all my burrs in here as well, so you don't necessarily have to buy all this right away because as I say this is a kit that I've just put together over the years. It's ended up with all sorts of stuff in here, there's stones, there's bloody, these are actually quite good, these are, I think these might have been part of the original kit, they're like a flat wheel that screws onto a mandrel very fine like I don't know 120 grit or something like that different length mandrels for the cartridge rolls I actually had a really massive one as well but the problem with those is if you fire it up without it pushing against anything it goes mental and bends it and it breaks which um, I just I don't want to talk about any further so yeah this is what you need guys as I say you can buy all these individually as refills and you can buy individual mandrels so if you are looking at doing stuff this is the sort of stuff you need to invest in, either buy a kit right from the get-go and then, um, you know, start building into the kit with other pieces and, you know, you'll find what you like using and um, all that sort of thing. So you can obviously stock up on the on the bits that you like using. So for me, this is my sort of go-to kit. Um, I also probably have a similar thing for Dremel stuff, all scaled down, obviously. I actually... Um, have a couple of boxes like this with all different attachments for a Dremel. Don't attempt to do something like this with a Dremel. Um, you'll get nowhere. You, you'll destroy your Dremel and it just won't end pretty. You need um, heavy duty tools. I also actually have an electric die grinder which is really good um, under a lot of circumstances. It's, it's a lot quieter than using the air die grinder which are very noisy but it is a lot bigger and bulkier and that makes it harder to control and a tool like this it really is all about the control that's my electric die grinder there it's milwaukee it's a nice unit uh, very old again it's probably at least 30 years old um, great for a lot of things not so great for other things because it is as you can see compared to this and it doesn't have any more power than the air grinder um, it's just harder to control and, you know, a bit of a bulky pain in the ass, but it is really quiet. My neighbours hate this. They make multiple complaints every time I use this, but I honestly don't give a fuck. Um, because they've got a cat. <laughs> so, pluses and minuses, pluses and minuses. So I have already started on this one with the cartridge rolls. So you can see the difference compared to this guy here. Like this. You can see it's just starting to get a lot more even. A lot more consistent. But I'm still not right up to that line. I've still stayed slightly. So you can tell with my shitty camera focusing like this. But I have still stayed off that line. Come on. Anyway, I'm probably about a quarter of a mil to half a millimetre off that line, which I'll sneak up to or very close to it with a flat wheel, which will come next. But for now, we'll give that one a hit with the cartridge roll. This is a flat wheel I'll be using next, guys. Just, uh, I think it's a 120 grit flat wheel on the die grinder. I've started on this one here with it. Um, I've been working around the top area. You can see I'm a lot closer to the line. As far as you can see, I'm probably right on it, which I'm close to being right on it. 
Whereas this one, which I haven't started on with a flat wheel, you can probably see there's still, oh, you know, half a millimetre gap sort of thing. And uh, the wall texture is still, you know, a lot rougher after the cartridge roll than, um, than how this one is starting. This isn't finished, but it is getting there. So, so what I'll do, I'm mainly going to work around the around the top and just getting us up to that line on the outside and getting that um, that top circumference really nice and smooth right up to the line and then I'll start working down uh, into the chamber to get it all kind of smoothed out I'll get to a certain point with it and then I'll start using some lubrication once I don't need the line anymore because once I start hitting this with WD-40 or a lubricant like that I'm going to lose this line along the top there. Um, all the Sharpie will come straight off. So I want that top area to be finished first before I start smoothing the way down inside these ports so I don't have to come up and need that line anymore. So um, that's what I'll do, guys. I'll um, give her a bit of a hit and you'll be able to see the results. So we are just about done now guys, all of the uh, the transitions and everything are looking pretty good, it's all uh, sort of quite exact, our, our outline around the outside we sort of went right onto the line, so that should probably give us about oh, maybe a quarter of a millimetre hanging inside once the throttle bodies are on um, that's all blended out nicely looking pretty damn good pretty damn happy with that all right let's get some throttle bodies on there I right, just quickly before I put the throttle bodies on I've cleaned up this area here too that we were looking at before where there was a bit of a contact between the side plate on the throttle body and the manifold here. I just used um, one, use one of the rotary burrs and a file and just uh, sort of removed that area there. So that shouldn't be an issue of contention anymore. All right, let's get these guys on. There's a thing I would have assumed these bolts would have been two different lengths just because but the thread down inside where the dowel pins are it doesn't start till 10 mil below the level of the surface here whereas these are right on the top mm, oh well see what happens Okay, there's a problem. Look at that. Look at the bolt heights once they drop in. As I thought. Well, that's a bit of a worry. These two are good. And this. Oh, one turn. Huh. Less than one and a quarter turns before it uh, runs out of thread. So whatever you do guys, don't attempt to do those up because you're going to strip out the first part of the thread. When you do, you need longer bolts. Maybe Polar Engineering are aware of this and they're going to address it, but they probably need to send out another four longer bolts to everyone who purchased these throttle bodies because uh, four of them are definitely too short. So if we throw these in, I'll just give them a slight turn so they don't drop out. 
and then just pop these in. You can see the obvious height difference there. And these guys are a 50 mil. So they need to be 60s. So you need four 60s in the set. You need four 50s and four 60s. So if someone out there would like to tag Polar Engineering, or hopefully they'll be watching this video, they might be able to address this problem for everyone. All right, while well, I've got the measurer out, oh, that's not the throttle body. I'll just re-put this back on just with the two bolts at work. And uh, while I'm measuring stuff, I might just measure that little side plate and um, give you an exact amount that it's hanging down. All right, so I'm just going to use a foot on a vernier caliper to do this. Not the most accurate way to do it. You really need to use a, a proper height gauge. But if we do it a couple of times, I'm sure we'll be able to get a repeatable, a repeatable amount. We'll just zero this out. And we'll just scoot over this. Oh, that first pass, 0 0.07, 0 again, as we come up it, you can see it climbing, 0 0.07, seems to be um, where the money is, yep. You can see there, 0 0.07, that's as high as, the, as it climbs. Anyhow, as I say, this is you know fairly and a fairly inconsequential thing. Your A-ring will probably take that up. But if you spot anything like that, as I say, you know, I just had to um, take a piece out of there and it's all good. Alright. So, drop this guy on. Same deal with the bolts here, guys. As you can see there, where it where it drops into that guy, we've just lost 10 mil of our thread. So we'll just throw these in. And let's have a look at the inside. All right, so this is our right hand side one looking down in there it's about oh, mate depending on how you hold the angle you pick up different sort of light reflections but we're about a quarter of a millimeter i reckon you can sort of see the light reflecting. If I go too far, it makes the edge look too fat. But not bad, not bad. Pretty happy with that. You can see there on the bottom left, it looks like there's a big lump. But if you go down on it, go down on it. Jesus, Trevor. And then come back, you see that disappears. That's just sort of the taper we're picking up. Now left hand side. Well now yeah, the light's a bit better in that one. Same deal, you can see that uh, we've probably got a quarter of a millimetre. Again, depending on how you angle the camera, it sort of looks more when you pull the camera over. So it's hard to get an even shot of it without some bits looking fatter than they are like like there but then you pull the camera back and the edge disappears so yeah about a quarter of a mil pretty happy with that it'll certainly be just fine alrighty so that's about that guys uh, as far as swapping the the linkages over as you saw there are instructions that come with the throttle bodies on how to actually do that you know, that's no, sort of no big deal. So I won't worry about doing that. This, this video has gone on long enough. I've no idea what it's going to end up being once I edit down this last section. 
but it's got to be well over an hour. Uh, so if you've hung in here for the whole hour, bloody good on you. I hope you've um, gained something from this. It hasn't just been a complete waste of your time. And the reason, as I mentioned, that I did uh, run it so long is because there is a lot of detail that you need to take notice of when you're doing things like this. One thing this video really highlights is that uh, nothing is really as simple as it seems, like as something like just, you know, going to a larger throttle body, and um, with that comes all sorts of potential issues that you could face. But as you can see, this worked out really well. The Polar Engineering throttle bodies, in my opinion, are absolutely amazing. The machine work on them is top notch. Um, they just feel like a very, very high quality unit. Um, yeah, bolts, that's probably the only issue. We need four longer bolts with them. Um, that little piece hanging proud, that may not be something that uh, is a problem for everyone. It may just be my manifold or some manifolds. Uh, that may be something that you have to take care of yourself. But other than that, mate, pretty bloody good. All right, guys. So as always, thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed. I hope you enjoyed this video as long as it was. Please give it a thumbs up and if you think there's anything that could have been done here differently or you have a comment on what I've done or on these throttle bodies, just pop it down below and that'll give us something to chat about. Alright guys, as always, I'll bloody well see you on the next one. Cheers.